This is what it is, okay? I said, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now, you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now, water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Alright, bros. So, this video I've been kind of promising you guys for a little while now. And, you know, I think about two weeks, three weeks now that I've been said I was going to make the video. And now I'm making the video, right? It's a beautiful day outside, as you can see. Look at the background, man. It's beautiful out today. The art of letting everything flow, let everything come to you within this world. Let the money, the fame, the power, the women, the respect, all the things, let it flow and come to you, right? So, I left that clip of Bruce Lee in the beginning. One of the greatest, the greatest philosophies that I ever I, that I ever heard. Right, water can crash, or you know it can flow and it can crash. You know things are gonna happen within your life. Just let it happen, right? And you have to be able to free your mind, right, for certain aspects of things, right, of emotional responses where women they come and go, things come and go, money comes and go, power, all of this comes and goes. So. You have to see it for what it is and knowing that, right, for instance, your girlfriend, right? Say you have a girlfriend and she's acting up and, you know, she's acting out of line and out of character and she wants to break up with you. Let it flow. <laughs> let it flow as harsh as it can be emotionally. Once you're able to clear your mindset and your mind frame, things are going to happen. You understand? Things are going to happen. And I take it from the spiritual aspect, right, where I don't let things affect me right sometimes i get mad right just like yesterday right i told you guys i went on this date with this girl within 15 minutes i kicked her out of my car because i wasn't happy with the way she was acting i let it flow i let it go but at this time i was in an emotional response where i was angry i allowed this girl to get me mad so i'm pissed off but then i just remembered things are going to happen things are going to flow things are going to happen regardless and like I said, this is where I take it into the aspect of God and in my spiritual forms of just letting things happen and knowing that when I put work, hard work in, God's going to reward me. Knowing that I'm going to get a lot of women. I do get a lot of women and a lot of things are going to keep flowing naturally. This one wasn't for me. Get up out of here. I'm sorry. It's going to happen. You have to let it flow and you leave it all within God's hands, bro. I, I wear this for a reason, bro. You have to leave it within God's hands. He's going to, he has your, your pathway written. You're good, bro. As long as you're doing the hard work, doing the things that of being a good human being, God's going to reward you. I know it. It's a fact. It has to happen. You know, for me, for instance, I always think about getting this money, always being a millionaire, you know, getting this money to provide it. A lot of this time, a lot of the times I'm not even thinking of getting the money for me, bro. It's literally to help others out. It's to help my family. It's to help my mom, my dad, my sisters, get them a house. You know, all sorts of things. Doing this for even my future kids. People don't even realize how deep this really gets for me. The average person doesn't get this stuff. This is why I will win. This is why I will be successful in whatever I do, bro. I leave it all within God's hands. If the girl is acting up, go. I don't, it's, it's not within me. I don't feel right. If your girlfriend's acting up and you're truly not feeling it you're not you don't like it anymore let it flow it's time it's that time you feel what i'm saying and it is hard trust me with the emotional responses yesterday i was triggered i was mad mad as hell bro but now that i cleared my mind everything is going it's going to happen there's going to be a lot more women within my life it happens god's going to reward you for the things and like i said when you leave it in god's hands it's probably some of the most powerful things that you can do is letting it flow and let it God let God handle it. Letting God handle it is the biggest thing that you can do. The best thing that you can do for your mental health and your mental mind frame. For instance, a lot of guys sweat women. A lot of guys are infatuated with them, which I am as well. But I am not to the point where I'm putting money or my purpose over them. You understand that comes first before women. I just dropped that video. Why you need to put money over bitches or 
purpose slash money over bitches, right? I make these videos for a reason. And I can leave it within God's hands. I know that for me working hard, doing everything I'm supposed to do, God's going to bring someone within my pathway in my life that's going to be beneficial for me. That I don't need to sweat a girlfriend. Leave it in God's hands. But you have to work hard. Prove it to him. Prove it to yourself that you're going to be something great. I say it all the time. So I have to prove it. I got to stand on my word and do what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to make, I've got to make these videos. I got to really be outside in the lab. I got to really do this for y'all and for myself to get better and become the best version of myself. And God will reward you. The world, the world will reward you for everything that you got going on. Leave it in God's hands. So if you're sweating women, leave it in God's hands. If you're sweating money, leave it in God's hands. But you have to put in that work. It's what... Let's say a lot of people who don't believe in God, it's what the universe will reward you for, right? I know God's rewarding me for working so hard. He's going to give me a lot of money. He's going to give me everything that I need in order for my life. A beautiful woman, beautiful family, a beautiful car, all the things. I'm letting it flow. It's going to flow. Leave it in his hands, especially when you're putting in this work. The main thing that you can't do, you can't skip over is putting in this work. You have to put in this work, bro. It's inevitable. This is what we do as men. We're supposed to put in this work. That's why I feel like it's inevitable for me to be successful. I'm giving good knowledge to people who is listening and I'm putting in a lot of effort for for this and I'm putting a lot of work, a lot of a lot of my time towards this. So I believe God's going to reward me for it. And I'm not giving you cheap dopamine bullshit type of content. I'm not doing that. That's not what I do. I'm not here for prankster videos or you know, some dopamine type of videos where it wastes your time. I'm here to provide knowledge that I read within books and that I truly feel within that he gives me to spread to you guys. This is why I make these type of videos. It's it's to literally better you in life. So you have to clear your mind frame, clear it from the things that aren't benefiting your life. For me, bro, there's a lot of women that are not benefiting my life. If they just want to fuck and suck on me all day, I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Some are toxic, some are just that. No, I don't want that. Porn, get it out the way. Video games, it's all bad for me. It's not good for me. It's not good for you. So get that shit out of your way. I'm taking this time, which is it is so powerful that you guys don't even know within the day of semen retention. I'm probably on like day 50 now or something. It is so powerful that I'm taking it like like time and time and time. Like I'm just taking my time with this shit. You know, but I'm actively grinding and I'm growing day by day. It's like I get stronger day by day within my mental mind frame, not just my physical aspect of going to the gym and lifting heavy weights. OK, that's cool. But my mental mind frame is shaping to be the person I want to be. Right. For instance, right. I was on the bay yesterday and I was walking and I was the thing is, I wish I had a little. A, a little um camera that follows me like that would be so fucking cool right if i had a little camera that follows me everywhere i go because i'd be spitting some game to myself all the time everything that i spew makes sense for me so i put that in my mind frame right for instance i was like yo i thought of it right i had this thought of yo i should probably get two macbooks so, uh, uh i should get another macbook so that I can edit one video that I already made on this one because it takes a long time for it to upload and to download and shit. So while it's doing that, I can go and edit another video on this laptop right here and get double the amount of work done. And then by then I can have 30 videos within a month that's already like done where I can just make videos, talk my shit, but it will be for each day, I'll have one video, another video, another video, another video, so that within 30 days, I'm already have 30 days of work already done. That is so powerful. But I let it flow, and I'm thinking of it, and then I spew it out loud, and I'm like, yo, that is a perfect idea. The things that you get from semen retention, the thought process, the pushing you to the next level is crazy, bro. I, I'm... I wouldn't have thought about that if I was a simp lame, busting nuts, you know, watching porn all day. You don't even get those thoughts because what I realize is the things that you consume and what you occupy your mind on is what the outcomes of your life will be. For instance, right, if I'm watching porn all day, 
not doing anything with my life, not doing anything successful within my life, like pushing myself to higher levels like I am now, I would be chasing women, just being on Tinder, on all these apps, liking, scrolling, this, that. I deleted all of that because I don't even want that distraction of women. I would be spending all my time with women, chasing them, going after each girl, this, that, like I used to do when I was younger. Now that I took that shit away and I implemented more podcasts, right? For instance, even when I'm driving to the gym or I'm driving, let's say, for an hour to go somewhere, right? I listen to podcasts. I'll listen to music for 10, 20 minutes. Okay, cool. Get into like a nice mood. Then I'll put on some Andrew Tate podcast or I'll put Patrick Bed David podcast or any type of podcast that I, even some people I don't know. But if they're talking money, I want that, that same knowledge that they're getting, that they have. I want it within my mind. So when they're telling you their morning routines of a millionaire morning routines, I follow that. I follow the structure and the, their belief system of why they're going to be successful and why they thought why they are successful and why they think like a whole different type of human. I take that knowledge from them and put it within me. That's that's powerful, right? All the videos, all the videos that I make, all the videos that I consume, all this, that, and the third, even on like TikTok when I find my videos, these videos people are not watching. No, nobody knows this stuff. Nobody's even into this kind of self-improvement, seamer attention type of stuff. So that's why I know I will be successful. Because the knowledge that I learned is so powerful. So when I'm reading books all the time, I've, I've read for the other day like two hours. Last night I read for about an hour. I'm going to continue doing this for a very long time and learn a, a lot of knowledge to share with you guys, right? So I'm letting from the hard work that I put in, right? Consistently going for my goals, writing them down every day but not stressing over anything else within my life. You know, early in the morning, I go for this long walk and I, I sit there and meditate and I, it's just the best feeling in the world. I let everything flow. I'm hearing the sounds of nature. Uh, I'm walking in the sand because I got the bay right next to me. So I'm walking in the sand. I see my seagulls, bro. I love seagulls. They're my favorite animal. I feel an enlightenment. I feel of higher spiritual vibrations i feel so great within myself i'm happy i'm smiling through the just walking i'm smiling and then sometimes i literally like i said i wish i had a camcorder i just start spewing knowledge as if i'm making a video right now because it's been engraved in me that this hard work of just keep working and keep making videos for you guys on a day now it's going to be a day-to-day -day basis that i'm holding myself to that standard it's going to be next level right i there's a, the standards of levels of letting things flow after you let you put in this work, it will come naturally. Not sweating like all these views. Like I'm not getting the amount of views that I want within my mind frame. You know, I'm happy with you know me finally getting recognition and starting to see my fan base grow. That's the biggest thing for me because I used to be happy with getting like seven videos, I mean seven views for a video. Some of those videos even had no views under it, like zero views. And I would, those days will be so hard, but I'm so grateful and happy that I'm learning so much. And this is valuable information and I'm giving it to the world and the world and God is just, is just giving me the, like the, for all my hard work and efforts for like about a year, it's about to be almost two years of being youth on YouTube. I'm starting to finally see the growth. I'm starting to build a fan base. I'm starting to become way more confident and being back on like this monk mode where I'm not even like engaging with women not even to the point where I'm not saying that I'm not talking to women on my day-to-day -day. I still flirt you know if, like, I'm not gonna lie but it's to the point where I'm not sweating it and it's all coming towards me the women the amount of I want you to understand the most women that I ever get in my life is when I'm really on retention and focused on my goals it is crazy it, it's the most it's crazy, bro. They're hitting me up. I'm going through the gym. I'm getting so many looks. It's, it's just inevitable. It's what happens. It's like God is giving you all the perks of this hard work. It's giving you the rewards for the hard work. You know, me being in a lab, me being in the gym, eating healthy, meditating, spending my time wisely on the things that I love to do. It's, it's different. It's like God is rewarding me for this. So I'm not sweating women. And like I said... If I was sweating women like how you guys might be, right? You're craving for a girlfriend. The thing is, I leave that in God's hands. I know after all of this hard work and everything like I that I do, I'm getting this money, this, that, and the third. 
he's going to provide me a girl that is going to be beneficial for my life. She's going to be maybe hitting the gym a lot. She probably cooks and cleans just like to the standard that I want. You know what I'm saying? A good feminine woman. I'm letting God bring that towards me because I'm working so hard for everything that I have. You know, so I let it flow. The money's going to really start flowing. You know, the fame and the success that I'm making within all my slow but surely like start to being a coming a really big YouTuber. The success on my YouTube, I'm letting it come to me. You know, the women, the power, the fame, whatever it is, I'm letting it all come to me while putting in this hard work on one single focus, which is my YouTube. Also the gym, but the gym is just something that I naturally do within my day to day life. So I don't even see that as like, oh, my God, I got to hit the gym. And it's something that's so uh, different. No, I already engraved that within me that no, I hit the gym. That's what I do. So you can't skip the gym. Don't be a bitch. You feel what I'm saying? So you have to let everything flow and the rewards of your hard work one day, slowly but surely will come to you. I promise you this. Leave it in God's hands. This is my everything right here. I talk to him in the morning. I talk to him in the afternoon. And I talk to him before I go to sleep. And I know I'm a bit of a dickhead. <laughs> I can tell you this right now. But he sees what I do. And I know within me that I'm doing something truly good for nature, for the world, for people to hear me. I know I'm doing something good. So I will be rewarded for it. No matter how long it takes, I will get lit. I know it doesn't matter what it is. I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. And I stand on that. You know what I'm saying? So you have to let everything flow. Everything come to you. Especially like, oh, let me tell you this one thing. I had quit my job. I quit my job about a week ago. So now I get more time for adequate sleep. I remember sometimes going to work literally off of three, four hours of sleep. And being so like brain dead within the first few hours before I get to be like, you know, it, it would take me a couple hours before, like, I get back into the mode of, like, okay, Patrick, you're finally awakened. It's like, I was at, I was running on 30% fuel. Like, my car, your car is about to give out when you, your car is about to give out when it doesn't have enough gas. That's exactly how I was moving, right, at work. Now I get my adequate sleep. But I remember at work, bro, I remember being, like, on the computer. If I sat down, <laughs> it's so funny, not getting enough sleep. I remember I would sit down. And literally, like, look at the computer screen. And my body, since I sat down, it thinks it's in rest mode. Bro, I would literally be, like, on the computer, on the mouse, like. Like. Like, yo, what the fuck? Like, wake up. Like, I'm smacking myself in the face a little bit. Like, yo, wake up. I'm trying to drink some coffee. The coffee's not working. Nothing's working. I'm literally so sleep deprived because the night before, I was spending all night editing a video. And I've realized that now that I got a couple months worth of savings for, um, you know, my rent and stuff that I can live on a low budget, not worried about anything else within my life. And I can have that time to make videos and make, you know, go on my walk and get sleep, literally to get sleep. Like, you don't know how much enlightenment this gives me, like how much happiness I get that I finally get to get a good eight hours of sleep no matter what. You feel what I'm saying? And in the morning, my routine is like I wake up. Go straight to the bay. Go for a walk. Instantly. I try to get my eyes open because Dr. Huberman, uh, like, uh, I watch podcasts. So I go into the science of, like, what you should do within your life to, like, get you to optimize your life, your health, your diet, what food you should eat, right? So within the first waking, like, the first hour of you waking up, go right outside. And, you know, if the sun's out, look at the sun. Ten minutes of being outside will wake you up, basically. And you could do your research on this, right? But that's what I do. So I go for a long... The walk is probably at least 20 minutes. But I walk there, walk back, and then I sit and meditate in the sand within... You know, I take a 10-minute meditation to get my brain going, get me functioning. And I do that every single day now. And it's been a week now. So I'm going to keep doing this for a while. And I get to feel this sort of enlightenment that I'm happy. You know, I, I finally get to... You know, I, I go back outside, the sun's out, the seagulls, the birds are chirping. I love seagulls. So, you know, the birds are chirping. My feet are in the sand. I'm walking. I feel like I'm just in nature. I'm, I'm letting all the wind hit me. I'm hearing the water breeze from the ocean. It is beautiful, you know. So after the meditation, I just feel like everything flows. I go uh, make some coffee, shower, edit a video like I did this morning. Or I go instantly and make a video. You feel what I'm saying? So now I get to bring you this knowledge that I can bring you without being sleep deprived the night before. Without 
me hitting the gym and feeling weak because the night before I was up all night editing a video. Now I'm, it's like everything's flowing. Everything's going to come to me. And I truly believe it. And with this hard work, God is going to reward you for the hard work. You have to understand this. No matter how long it takes, he will reward you for the hard work. So let everything flow. Let everything come to you. The woman, let them come to you. And you might not understand this, right? For instance, when you see signals, that's a woman kind of coming to you. So you can literally, like what I do, my game is literally like when I really have a woman geeking on me, no matter where I'm at, I tell them come here because they see me as higher. They looking at me like, yo, who is that? So I already have the ball in my hand. I tell you, come here. And we, I chat it up and I get the number and this down the third. I've done that so many times. It's, it's my game. That's what I took to my arsenal. So that's a way of women coming up to you. Another way is women literally coming up to me to ask for your, my number or things like that. Notice that. But it's more rare that way because a lot of women would just like to show you cues and, you know, sort of things. So I still have the power. I tell her, come here. And, I, you know, you feel me? I break down my game. I get the number to stand the third. So basically letting that flow the money is going to flow from my videos and everything that i got going on so i'm not tripping i'm not tripping over it. i'm not stressed out but this work is going to get done and i want to lastly say for like this my future what i got going on i listen to podcasts like i say and my favorite youtuber is hamza and he says he takes it to the next level where he's making 100k a month which is so good and crazy and like that's a hell of money but he's putting in 16 hour work days so i see myself to that standard where i might not be putting 16 hour work days as of right now but soon that's like the level of what i have to be at because he's great i have to follow the greats you study the greats you follow the greats what does he do 16 hours worth of work i could do that i know i could do that i'm patrick i'm one of the greats too so i can do what he does for sure so as i slowly start to build of really making videos I believe, bro, that one of these days, like like within this month or the next month, I would already have 30 videos for the next month already planned out. So, like, let's say for, I think it's April 12th, by May 12th, I would already have, like, 30 videos already, like, already, like, done, uploaded, and it's supposed to be uploaded that day. You feel me? A video each day, but 30 days ahead of my work. That is the next level that I'm saying. And through the hard work, I know things will come from that. It will flow. You feel what I'm saying? Being 30 days ahead of work, of uploading a video a day, but 30 days ahead, that's crazy. But that's the next level I think that Patrick is truly going to go for. But y'all got to really standardize and realize that like, and implement that in your life whatever your goal is maybe it's to lose 50 pounds break down the the game of how you go and do it you know what i'm saying like how i broke down the game maybe i'll go buy a macbook another macbook and while i'm done editing one video i shoot the, another video to that macbook because like the editing process and you know all like the downloading shit takes like hours if i could do twice that two like twice the work you feel what I'm saying? Bro, don't nobody know this type of game, though. Don't nobody want to push themselves to this standard. But on retention, it comes naturally. Like, these thoughts come naturally. And it's like, damn. Almost to the point where you feel like a fucking genius. Like, yesterday when I thought about this, I was like, yeah, you can do it. And you're a fucking genius because ain't nobody doing that. You feel what I'm saying? Ain't nobody going to do that. Ain't nobody worthy enough. No disrespect. Not to say that they're not worthy enough. But they don't have enough confidence and you know, self-discipline to put themselves towards that goal of working 16 hours a day, getting twice the amount of work done within 30 days, you will have a video for a Patrick Marino every single day. And I'm going to have to hold myself to that standard now since I said it. You see how powerful that is? Now, my mind frame of the next level, you have to really just see what I just did. The next level of Patrick now is that he gets 30 days of work done. So now I have to go up to it and break down that game of like, okay, I'll have a video done every day for 30 days, but already done in the future. That's the next level that I'm now going to have to hold myself to. Do you see what I just did? <laughs> this is why I need a camera on me at all times. I swear, but I love y'all, bro. So let everything flow, the money, the fame, everything that's going to happen within your life. It's going to happen for a reason. Oh, let me get into that. It's going to happen for a reason. If your girl wants to break up with you or she breaks up with you, 
I see that as a sign as, okay, God, you're going to put another one, another girl that's doing better that will like that will amplify my life and do better for me through my hard work. He's going to put that there for you. So if she wants to leave, go like it's going to happen regardless. You can't trap someone. No, you please stay or no, no, no. You're going to stay. Mm -mm. Let it flow. You know what I'm saying? The woman, let them flow. Uh, money, let it flow. All the things. Ha oh, everything happens for a reason. I remember back in the day. Right when I was at the lowest of the lowest for me, like I'm talking about the lowest point of my life. Let me break that down for you real quick. So the first thing that happens is, you know, my mom kicks me out of my house and she shoots me right to my auntie's house. Like without, <laughs> without like, without a doubt in her mind, she's like, no, you're going to your aunt's house in the city. Right. So cool. I was already basically, I lived with them already before, but I lived in the city already. So cool. I look, I'm living in Patterson now, if you want to know what uh, city it is. I'm originally from Hilden, but I moved to Patterson now, right? And, you know, I'm having problems with living over there. I'm living with my auntie. It's, bro, the craziest things. Like, the littlest thing would trigger her. It's over. It's, yeah, I know how the Puerto Rican moms go, and you know, you know how it goes. So, for the moment you wake up, 7 in the morning, there's already a problem that you did without even like like fuck bro I, I just woke up like what the fuck is going on you feel me that's exactly what's happening i probably on my life like i am stressed the fuck out from the moment i wake up even though i'm already used to it from my my mom but my auntie was a little bit more different where if you see the crumb and you cook and there was a crumb on the fucking counter she on your ass she calling you i'm on my way to work yeah why the fuck you leave the crumbs you gotta clean after yourself yada 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 I'm like, damn, bro, to the point where I had to mute her, like, on, like, the phone calls, like, she wasn't getting reached to me, she had to text me, because I couldn't have that, like, it was crazy, right, so this is happening within, like, a seven to eight month span that I stayed over there, right, and basically, I'm having a lot of problems, right, like, it's just a lot of bullshit, like, a lot of bullshit that, it's crazy, but I'm gonna break it down for you, is, like, those type of problems, all sorts of things, right, but also, now this is to the point where she's tired of my shit, where she's she wants me to kick like kick me out right so she gives me a month a month in advance of like patrick you have to get the fuck out of here basically just saying you gotta get the fuck out of here but not in that way but basically like like okay it's, it's looking kind of rough for you right here right now it's not we're not working we're not eye to eye and like i got my big cousins living with me i got uh basically my aunt's like boyfriend there too and it, it's just a lot of people within this one household bro crazy shit so she's basically giving me a one month <laughs> a one month notice in advance of like yo you got to get the fuck out of here and i'm like all right because me one thing about me is my pride does get in the way where okay like if i'm not wanted in a place or anything like that fine i'll live in my car if i have to like i'm i don't kiss ass i'm not gonna beg for the stay i'll go you know what i'm saying which is like you let the things flow things are gonna happen for a reason so at this time, I'm stressed out, bro. Like, I have them, like, these type of pimples everywhere on my face. Like, everywhere. I am stressed out, which is causing me to get more acne. And I'm smoking weed all day to cope with all of the stress I got going on. Work, all this, that. Bro, crazy shit. I have a girlfriend at the time. And then, basically, I get the notice of, like, okay, you have one month to find where you got to go. Yada, yada, yada. I'm stressed out. I'm like, yo, where the fuck am I actually going to go? And I came to the conclusion that if I have to live in my my car, I'm going to do that. I'm not, I'm not going to kiss ass. I'm not going to beg for more time. Nothing, fuck all that. So the time is getting within this time frame of, okay, I'm getting kicked out. Where the fuck? What do I do? Like, what's going on? Face, pimples, everything. Stressed out, smoking weed. I'm high as fuck. I'm just fucked. My whole life is fucked at this time. I'm, I, at this time, I literally had gotten the suicidal thought. Like, real funny. No funny shit. Where I'm like, yo... Why is always your life so fucking hard? Why is it always you? Like, all the other friends, all the people around the neighborhood that I used to live in a suburb, like a, a middle class suburb where, like, I could cross the street. I'm in the city of Patterson. So it, it's basically like a middle class, but I'm in the city kind of thing, right? I'm like, yo, how come everyone gets it beautiful and nice out here? Like, why, why they have their mom and dad and, you know, they don't have to stress about rent. They don't got to stress about anything. They have food on their plates, this, that, and the third. All of this shit. All they have the life of easy. They have the pool in the backyard. Why is it your life that's always hard? That's that, that was what was going on in my mind. I was going to, like, my mind was coping. And I had gotten a suicidal thought where 
I was like, man, why don't you just end it? And I swear on my life, the moment, like, my brain said, I just smacked myself. I was like, wait, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, what's going on? That's how I knew my mental state was really bad. Where at this time, I'm journaling every day to really overcome this shit. And I, I watched Hamza, and, you know, Hamza got me out of, like, this loophole of, like, you know, stop smoking weed, stop being a lame, play, stop playing video games. And I followed that, and it got me out of everything. But basically, right, so I'm getting kicked out of the house. I have nowhere to go. Then my girlfriend that I love at the point... She break, like, we break up, right? Like, too much shit was going on. We was fighting, arguing, too much things going on. So, we break up. So, now, I'm ho I'm basically homeless. I don't know where I'm going to stay. My girlfriend, like, breaks up with me. And I'm heartbroken like a motherfucker. You know, you getting your feelings, but I'm smoking weed. I'm sm At this point now, I'm smoking dumb weed. At least, like, we pushing four blunts a day. I'm fucking fried at all times. And it, it kind of like was cope for me so that I don't think about shorty, you know. But I, I got bigger problems on my hand too. Like, I'm like, where the fuck am I going to live? Then, the next week later, bro, all of this stress is like leading me into these bad moods. And I go to work one day. And they, they have these things called essentials, right? I used to work at Nordstrom. And they had the clothing called essentials. And I love that brand. That's like one of my favorite brands. But at this time... I would resell. I was reselling shoes. It's that just trying to get more money on my plate. Like I had no bread. Like I'm getting paid, but a lot of that money is going to weed, is going to food, is going to all sorts of things, rent, this, that. So my paychecks are basically nothing. I'm I'm not having a lot of money within my pocket. And I'm like, okay, I can flip some bread. I could flip these essentials because at the time essentials was popping. It's like two, three years ago. It's like two years ago where essentials is popping to the max. Like I'm talking about um a, a, a sweater like this like for instance a sweater or a hoodie like this if i bought it for a hundred dollars it would go to like 220 250 within like days of it coming out so i would quick flip it get like you know 150 dollars that was some money to me it was some bread it's some good profit especially when you're poor broken you have nothing going on for yourself right so I, i'm telling you man my whole life was going negative and they had gotten these we had gotten the essential drop with this which is rare and at this time, this is when it was the max popping, like the most, like everybody wants the shit. So I go to the rack. I grab damn near as much as I possibly can. It was probably like eight hoodies because I was a fucking brokey anyways. And like eight hoodies, right? And at this time, like I told you, they're going to give me some bread, right? So I pack it up and I leave it in a plastic bag for my other coworker. And I'm like, yo, bring this up right now so that nobody takes this shit, whatever the fuck. And I left, I wrote my name on the paper because that's what we're supposed to do. This is Patrick to do, do not fucking touch my shit like type shit. And my coworker was like, no, nah, I don't want to do it because I don't want to get in trouble. So I'm like, oh, what the fuck? She's like, you have to go get cash so they don't know it's me or whatever the fuck. Right? I forgot the situation. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to go get this cash. Make sure you stay here. Not even, not even 30 minutes go by, but I tell her like, make sure this stays here. Don't let nobody touch it. Stay right here. I'll be right back. And... Bro, I go to go to the ATM. I get the cash. I come back. My shit is missing. So I start spaz. And I'm like, yo, I'm telling you everything that's going wrong within my life. It is going wrong. <laughs> like, I'm think this is my biggest break because I'm going to have to go somewhere. I'm going to live. I need to live somewhere. I need this fucking bread to the max. Like, I'm, bro, I'm down bad at this point. So I go to my coworker. I'm like, yo, where the fuck is my shit? She's like, wait, it's not over there? I'm like, you stupid bitch. I'm like, yo, you stupid bitch. Yo, I'm so tight at the point, bro. I'm sorry. I'm like, I love this coworker too. It's like one of my favorite people at the time in the world. I'm like, this stupid bitch. Like, I'm so tight. I don't even know. I'm thinking this is the last of it. Like, yo, what the fuck? Right? So I go back to the spot. My clothes aren't there. She's like, well, where did it go? I told you to fucking stay right there. I'm like, yo, I told you to stay right here. Like, what the fuck going on? You know? But you know how women be. They go do some nut shit. Oh, you come back. The shit ain't there. And I told you I had my name on it. So this is what really got me mad. So I'm like, all right, somebody really playing with me right now. This is where I'm tight. I'm looking at you like, yo, like, yo, you about to get it, right? So I go around to my other coworkers and I'm asking like, yo, what? where's my shit? Like, you know, and they're just like, I don't know. I don't know. So I finally put two and two together. I was like, it must have been the fucking manager. So at the time, my manager, this is when we were wearing masks, so I'm so tight. The ma manager, she ugly as shit, too. So he got me so mad. I'm like, this ugly bitch took my shit. Yo, what the fuck going on out this motherfucker, right? So I pull up on the manager. <laughs> I pull up hot. I'm like, 
yo, I go straight walking up to her because I'm like, I don't care. I'm ready to crash out upon this shit, right? You know, not saying about to slap the manager or some shit, but I'm like, yo, where the fuck is my shit? Like, what you did with my shit? So I roll up on her. I'm like, where's my stuff? You know, I'm looking at her just straight up like, where's my stuff? I don't care if she's a manager, boss, this, that. I'm like, yo, where's my stuff at? I'm so fucking serious. I'm looking at her like, yo, don't play with me right now. She's like, oh, you're talking about the stuff that's on the on in the plastic bag, all the essentials? I was like, yeah, my shit that I put my name on. And she's like, hold on, calm down. I'm like, nah, where is it? And she told me that she says I put it back onto the shelf because it wasn't paid for. There was no receipt for it. So I knew she was trying to get pe be petty and play with me. But I was so tight. Like, I'm telling you, I went to go get the cash. Not even 30 minutes, bro. Like, at the ATM, I had to go get some food. I got a snack. I was hungry. Whatever the fuck. Not even 30 minutes, bro. Let's say 20 minutes. I come back. The shit is gone. Somebody playing with me. So, I'm like, what you mean you put it back on the floor? Because, like, I'm telling you, bro. I'm trying to tell you. The essentials were selling like this. So, I knew the customers. Everybody in that motherfucker. And, like, we had, like, on... Uh, display like yo this shit is coming out be here at this time and people used to come here hours early just to go cop you feel me so i go back to the shelf ain't shit there i'm like huh where the fuck is my shit i am mad as fuck bro i'm trying to tell you how pissed i am bro y'all don't even know I, it's over at this time i'm thinking it's over i don't give a fuck about this job so but the manager before i went to go check she like she like who are you talking to? This, that, and the third. What well, you need a comment? I'm like, no. I'm, I'm like, nah. Don't play. I, I'm like, she. I, I go and check my clothes, and I just, I walk away. I turn my back on her. I don't even give a fuck. She's mid sentence talking all this shit. I just turn my back and walk to the, to see where the essentials was. The shit wasn't there. She comes up on me like, okay, now we got to talk. She's like, I, I, we need to talk in private, right? So we go to the private room, whatever. And I'm look, I'm so tight. I'm telling you, I'm over everything. Like I'm just so in such a bad mental mind frame and depression type of state. I'm ready to crash out over this shit, uh, bro. <laughs> to the point where I'm thinking, yo, who her boyfriend? Because I'm gonna slap the shit out. <laughs> yo, I'm thinking negative things. I'm not supposed to even think this type of shit, right? Her boyfriend has nothing to do with it. <laughs> but I'm thinking, yo, I'll slap the shit out her boyfriend. Who the fuck is he? Like crash out shit, right? Like I, I left that all in the past, right? So she's talking about. Um, what, what what's going on? Why are you moving like this? Why did you, why you get mad? Why you spaz on me? I don't think this is the, like, right thing for you. I'm like, you took my stuff with my name on it. I broke down the game, especially what I broke down to y'all. I broke it down in the most, like, to make her look retarded. Because I know what she did. I know she knew kind of what it, what it was with the resale game within it. So she wanted to be petty and get my shit away. So... I'm like, bro, I came and I got the cash so I could pay for it. Why did you touch it? Now everyone got it, this, that, and the third. So I get tight and I just walk away again. Like, because I'm not playing this shit. I'm not hearing all of that bullshit. I'm mad. Leave me alone. You feel me? Everyone around my way, my coworkers, they knew what's up with me. They was like, yo, like, chill out. He mad. Like, don't even play with him. And all my coworkers, they like, yo, you coming? You good? Like, there's, I loved a lot of my coworkers at this job, right? Like, they had my back. I loved them. To like the end, and it was like, man, I would have done it for you. I know, and there was some. Pre I should have went to this other person to ring it up for me and shit. But basically, and I wasn't doing nothing wrong though. We wasn't doing nothing wrong. This was the rules. I was, I played by the rule book, you know. So all the other people, they was like, man, like you mad as like he he's not in the mood. Leave him alone. This down the third, right? So I go to work for the next week and shit like that, and and you know I had the feeling I was gonna get fired type shit. And I was telling my coworkers, like, yo, I'm probably going to be up out of here for the way, you know, I kind of spazzed on the bitch and I just, like, disrespected her kind of thing. And they didn't know. They was like, nah, you good, bro. Like, trust me, you good. And, you know, um, I, I was upset. And, you know, I was just really mad. And, you know, a week later, she calls me into the room and she basically says, you're fired. So now I have no income. And like I said, my emotionals, my emotions controlled me where I'm like, I'm ready to crash out. Like, I'm really so fucking mad. So my emotional response was, you know, act up and I did. And, you know, I wasn't in the right mind frame. So she fired me. And I'm like, all right, I get it. I always took accountability. To like, yeah, you did that. Like, you know, when I calmed down, I was like, damn, I look, he bugged the fuck out. But it was just, I was so mad. I'm telling you, every, at like all points of my life at this time, I'm mad. I'm waking up. I'm hearing bullshit, bro. You don't even know what it's like. I'm waking up to my auntie spazzing. It's seven in the fucking morning. Like, cut me a break. You feel me? So, you know, all of this shit going on, I'm stressed out. Now I, I'm like, okay, I don't even get no money and I don't know where the fuck I'm going to go. 
and thank God for being God. You know, he looked after me and I'm praying to him. And I, I heard this one saying that got me out of everything. It was God gives his God gives his hardest battle to his strongest soldiers. And that stuck with me for a while. I'm like, yeah, man. Like, you know, it, it gave me some sort of enlightenment. I was journaling. I was reading. I was meditating. I was trying to do a lot of things at this time. But it was just, it was so hard. But my life, I got out of that, you know. And I, I like I said, I let it flow, you know. Like, it, it, I started to see it is what it is. I got fired. Okay, there's nothing that I can, like, I'm mad at this point. Like, okay, it happened. Fuck her. Keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? So, came about that I went another day to the mall with someone and, it came out like a month later that she had gone fired too. I was like, man, see what goes around really comes around. This is what I'm trying to say. What goes around really comes around because I didn't do nothing wrong up until the point where I spazzed, where I said, yeah, I fucked up. But I wasn't doing nothing wrong within the system of Nordstrom of like, you know, I knew the rules and I played by them and I was supposed to buy, but she took my shit out. And now look what happened to her. She got fired too. You see what I'm saying? It, it was like, it, it was like, okay, I see what it is. What goes around comes around, right? So I have nowhere to go, right? And I don't know what the fuck to do. Like I'm genuinely clueless. I'm getting, I'm packing my stuff for the last day with the homies. My homies helping me get all my stuff out of my auntie's house, and you know I'm I'm filled with like my car. My old car was the red Toyota. If you if you were here for that, I love you, bro. Shout out to that. But um, it was bags full. My back of the trunk was full, and. I didn't know where I was going to go. And I thank God for this one friend for me because I, I love him with everything. And I knew if there was anything that went wrong, I knew to call him. So for my last resort, I called him. And he's like, yo, like, I'm like, yo, bro, I'm down bad. Like, I'm damn near tearing on the phone because like, I was just it, I was just explaining like, yo, everything's going wrong for me. I don't know what to do, bro. And I'm like, I, I believe I'm 18, 17, about to be 18 at this time. Right. So I'm, I'm a youngin' still. You feel me? Like, it was just a lot. I'm getting kicked out. I'm basically about to be homeless. I don't know where I'm going to go. I'm thinking I'm going to sleep in a car. It's fucking winter. Like, it's snow coming outside. It's cold as hell. And I just, it was just the thoughts that I couldn't get out of my mind where I'm like, why the fuck does everyone else have such an easy life where they have their mom and dad, where they have all these things that they don't have to worry about a lot of things. They're not stressed out. They're, they have time. They go to school. Their parents pay for everything. You know, I had to pay for literally everything for up until the point when I first got my first job at 16 or when I got my first job at like 15, I was paying for everything. The food that I ate, the clothes that I wore, everything. I was a grown man basically at 15. So I'm just like, man, why the fuck is always me? You feel me? It's just, you have no, like, it felt like I had no choice but to be like a victim in this situation. But I'm proud and I could say that I'm proud for everything that I went through. All of this stuff, it made me who I am. This is why I'm like, no disrespect for most people. I am leveled up on them. I know how to cook. I know how to clean. I know I pay my own rent. I got my own things going. I've been paying rent since I was like 16, 17. You feel what I'm saying? So I knew all of this shit. I knew I had to work for my jobs. I like I knew all of this. I'm still in high school. I know how to work. I know how to do this, that, and the third. I wasn't scared. I know how to communicate with people. All of this shit. I was building myself without me realizing and knowing that these hard times really build you. So if you're going through a hard time, Bro, this will build you. You'll be thankful in the future that you went through it, right? So I called my homie, and I'm on the phone. He's like, yeah, bro. And I explained everything. He's like, yeah, bro, come stay with me. And I was so grateful that he said that because I ended up staying with them for about two months before, you know, I started to get some money off the reselling shit, started selling shoes, being out and about, you know, grinding with my bro. And I'm I, like, I'm thankful for God for looking out for me and for him looking out for me. And, you know, I end up, Actually, like, my dad came across the information of what happened, and he was like, yo, come over here with me. And like I told you, me and my dad, like, you know, we weren't close, at, like, for real. Like, it was always me. It was always I had to do it myself, so I didn't realize, like, yo, like, I kind of got my dad there, but he wasn't, it felt like, the thing is, my vision, he wasn't there. Like, I'm not, like, I don't call him. I wasn't calling him at all this time where I'm sad. This I didn't know of this, right? My mom was calling him, telling him this stuff. So he got based up, he got the information of what was going on. He was like, yo, come over here. You'll come out and work. We'll work like a motherfucker. We'll get this money, all sorts of things out here. And so I basically moved three hours away to South Jersey. And, you know, after staying two months with my friend, I had gotten some bread. I got like back on my toes and I was still so thankful for him. And I went up over here. I went down here in South Jersey. And this was the greatest thing that happened to me. But like I told you, he wasn't in my life. So at this point, I'm thinking like, yo, should I do this? Like, it was a big leap. I had everything over there. I had all my friends. I had all my family, all everyone that I knew. And, you know, 
I, I didn't want to leave it. I didn't want to leave all the things, you know, out here to live with my family. And me and my dad literally, guys, you got to understand, me and my dad shared a room where he would put the bed on the floor and he allowed me to stay on the bed. Um, He'll he'll have an extra bed. He put it on the floor. And right here, the floor is right here. He put the bed on the floor. And this was my bed that I laid on. There's no room for us in this small. The room was so small. There was no room for us. And he'll allow me to stay on the bed since I was a younger kid, I guess. You know, I'm like 19 now or 18, nine, about to be 19. This is when I'm turning 19. I came out here May 1st. So I was 18 turning to be 19. And I would literally, like, if I stepped, like, if I wanted to get off the bed, I would almost step on my dad. Like, I got to, like, watch out. Like, I got to step on the mattress part, not, like, you know, the uh, the floor. There's no floor. It's not enough space. It's literally the bed on the floor that he slept on in my bed on the you know, on the thing. And I would literally, because I would always wake up so much earlier than him to try and go hustle and find something else to get some money from. I would go um, step on the floor and this, that, you know, because he had work at certain times. So, you know, his schedule was all around. So he would come home dumb late. And while I already be sleeping, he'll be on the floor sleeping too. So I was, I was working out here, but I literally had no room. This room is not even a room, bro. It's like, it was crazy. There was so many issues that we had. We would always fight everything like that. Until so we got our apartment now, and I thank God for everything, cause now I got my apartment. I let everything do come to me. I believed in God. I started going to church every Sunday. My life changed like gracefully, like in such a good way. I I'm meditating, especially at that time. I'm meditating for bro, like at least twenty to thirty minutes a day. I'm walking to the bay. I started doing boxing. I was boxing for like two to three months to get my mind, mental clarity. I'm writing down in my journal. I'm finding out who I was and I became a, such a great human being through all my hard work. I was endlessly hitting the gym. You know that. I was working, um, fencing with him and stores, all sorts of things. I worked at uh, a shoe place out here. I worked at Walmart. I just quit my job at Lowe's like I told y'all. Bro, I let everything flow. I put in that hard work and I let everything flow from that. You know, the women were coming. But at this point, bro, like, I don't even have a room. Why the fuck am I? Like, at this time, I was worried about women. But, like, not chasing. They would always come to me. But, like, I'm like, ugh, like, you know, why am I thinking about women when I need this fucking bread? So that's where I put my mental mind frame to go onto that monk mode. I did for, like, at least, like, three, four months. Because, like I said, I came out here. I didn't know nothing. I didn't know no one but my family that I stayed with. You know, I stayed with my dad, my mom, my dad, me and my dad in one room, and then my uncle, my little cousin, and his um his girlfriend all within this one household. The house isn't big. We're bickering. We're fighting. There's so much more things going on within my life. But I was grateful that I, I came out here because now I got my apartment with my dad and we pay rent. I just quit my job to pursue what I got going on with my YouTube and that's when I did start my YouTube videos when I came out here because I was watching Hamza and I was doing the self-improvement things and my life drastically changed. And I always put in such hard work within anything I did. So, you know, I went with that. I did what I stuck with what I was supposed to be doing. I was working a lot, all sorts of things. You know, I've been putting in this work since a young bull, like I told y'all. So if you're going through anything, especially in life, I just spewed out everything. And, you know, like I said, I came out here, my life drastically changed i met good people out here some people who are like-minded but like me i've worked you know i've done everything a lot of the people around the way my reputation is a great reputation people know me there you know i know a lot of people i go to church every sunday i'm proud and i'm happy for what happened all of that bullshit that happened in my life at the time where at the time you might not realize you might be going some, some through some shit you might be um depressed in your mind you might not going on but like i told y'all bro i was thinking of like you know, I had suicidal thoughts in my mind, you know, that's crazy. You know, Patrick before never experienced that. So it was tough for him. So, you know, you know, maybe that big change and that big step and cutting off your friends and all those people that you were around that, you know, it might be for the better, for real. God's going to bless you throughout those hard times, you know, and once you overcome it, you will really be grateful for everything. I am grateful for all of the bullshit that happened to me. You don't even know how grateful I am. That, you know, growing up without my dad, you know, being poor, we don't have nothing like it was the biggest benefit of my life because I tightened up at a younger age. I am levels ahead of most of the people my age because they still getting things handled for them. They're still they don't know. They're just starting to work their first jobs. I've worked my first job when I was 15, bro, under the table shit. And, you know, just knowing that I always had to work for everything I had going on, knowing that I cook my meals. I say pride and said I cook my own meals, bitch. Yeah, I know how to whip it up. 
fuck is you talking about? I cook my own meals. I don't need nobody for nothing. You know, that's the person who I am. That I grew and built this character that a guy doesn't even know how to make scrambled eggs. He's like a retard. I'm sorry. You know, if you don't know how to cook up four eggs, you're retarded or something, bro. You know? So I built this character through long and hard. All the hardships that happened within my life. Y'all don't even know. And that was just like a small thing of it. Because when you go through so much bullshit, it just becomes so like a repeated thing that it just doesn't affect you to the point. But it's still in your mind frame. Like, fuck, man. What the fuck is going on? Like, I don't have to be dealing with this shit. You know, so now I'm con like I'm focused on my mind. I got all rid of all the bullshit, my consciousness out here. I'm focused on what I got going on and I don't give a fuck about nothing else. I'm letting everything flow. The money, the power, the fame, everything is going to come through your hard work. I've noticed this is why I talk with such conviction because I know this for a fact. You know, understand what I'm saying? I leveled up upon levels and by Patrick by 25, he's going to be a fucking great if God lets me live to that time. He will be something great. I promise you. So, I love y'all, bro. This video got way out of hand. I could have cut this off at 20 minutes. But, like I told y'all, I need a camera recorder on me at all times. Because I just be spitting some shit for such, for such a while that it's like, it is what it is. But, I love y'all, bro. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, bro. And hit that bell notification so that every time I post, you get notified, bro. And, my, and I'm going to leave my last video right here for you guys. So, if you didn't catch up on that, go get some more game for your fucking brain. If you love me, bro, leave a like for me, bro. I need, you know, leave a comment for me. Show me that you love me. You feel me? Because I want to get my message out to a lot of people. Because I know my message is beautiful and it's strong and it stands, you know. So, I love y'all, bro. So, stay yourself. Stay 300. And whatever you're doing, like, trust me, I believe in you, bro. <laughs>